Welcome back everyone to Kazarek, I'm your host, Mr. Mokover, and here we're at Spain is dying. Ukraine as well, what's, what's holding on? We're actually at, maybe we might be able to push in a little bit, maybe perhaps. And I've gone to war with Denmark. Denmark, as we said last time, well, they've been a little ratty, they've been a little uh, conniving. They've been, uh, well, very short sighted, we'll say. But we're pushing in and we're doing alright. We can't quite take Odense yet, but we'll get there eventually. Once we take all these tiles, we'll just start smashing through here a little bit, hopefully. And hopefully don't get cut off ourselves. That would be quite unfortunate. But happy 1940, everybody. We're here. We're going to do the best we can. And hopefully not die trying. Hopefully not. But you never know. Uh, that's not bad. Oh, well, so we did finish in the Netherlands, finally, thank God. But other than that, like, we're struggling a lot. I mean, we're holding our own line fine. The Italian Republic declared war on two Sicilies. So that's why we're kind of extremely deep here into Italy. An Irish-German business venture? A representative from the Irish government's approach us, apparently. The Irish are attempting to catch up with the rest of the civilized world, and have taken an interest in opening up a foreign industrial branch in one of our colonies, Morocco. The Irish have an interest in the nation's natural ore reserves, which we currently have made much of an effort to exploit ourselves, in exchange for the rights to export the resources back to their own nation. The Irish have promised to pay us a share of the profits. A lucrative offer indeed, we accept? Okay. So we've also done combat defeatism, which I forgot about. The war has got the German nation unprepared, and many, sapped by years of economic downturn and political squabble, are uncertain whether we will be able to endure a joint syndicalist and Russian attack. Such defeatism will be squashed immediately, and the patriotic spirit of all Germans uplifted, together for victory, and restore the Notabitur system. Notabitur. As a high school uh, diploma received after a hastened and easier final exam to allow students in the last year of high school to volunteer for the army in the times of war. We must reinstate the system to give our youth a chance to serve the country without impeding their academic goals. Uh, we can use more war sport. The talents of Riefenstahl. Lenny Riefenstahl, one of the most talented filmmakers of our age, has recently volunteered to shoot propaganda films for the Imperial Army. An incredible deal. Her awe-inspiring pieces will display the power of the Army and the glory of the Kaiser, and teach people that they have nothing to fear, which would be fantastic. Hopefully, as we're trying to get to Odense as well. Good, 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 good. Oh, hello. What happened? Oh, our offer of recall volunteers. Oh, okay then. Please, sink everything you have with our fleet. A investment in Egypt, huh? A number of companies have decided they're going to invest in Egypt, which has become a program uh, to modernize the country. As such, these companies are seeing slightly better profits, and this has started to trickle back to Germany. Let us both profit, shall we? Uh, I don't want to deal with them. These guys from there. And we're going to have them. And we're going to be on no dents. Yeah, I was a little worried about this. They are doing decently de well down here. Uh... This is very concerning. What is this? Oh, the Batavian Khan is coming back, huh? Not a deal. Uh, I need you to stay there for now. They're slowly pushing us out of there, which is not good. But while we're kind of like delayed in Denmark, hello. What is this? What's going on? Sinking some convoys. I love it. Sinking 10 submarines. I love it. <clears throat> I fall of Mexico City because America, on time, is really in the war. Oh, hello. Just go straight there. Straight there if you possibly can. <coughs> Excuse me. Please don't attack our supply lines. That would be very not good. Because we want to get to Norway. We can secure that. Oh, well, that's not good. Schnikes. Yeah, I kind of figured that would happen eventually. Yeah. Ah, good. Well, talents of Rishunstahl. And do we have another light cruiser? Yes, very good. Very good. Uh, anything here? Anything really worth using and doing? Great development pole. Yeah, we could do that, but we don't have to. Uh, I still like to do this one, but we can't. So we might want to wait for a combined arms genius, or no, maybe Wolfgang Wegener, perhaps? But after this one, anti sedition laws sound like fun. We must once again impose siege law, or siege law, and begin a crackdown on the fifth column residing in our country. The syndicalists and radical socialists will surely sabotage war effort to aid Paris's victory. They will receive president in extreme cases, the bullet. But right now, we're looking slightly better. Hey, we have Denmark. Yeah, we're gonna eat you. Ooh, maybe we can use your ships immediately. Well, let's go over here and do it like this. 17, four subs. You know what, just throw them all in here anyways. It's fine. So you did very well. I need you up here against these guys, though. Now, if we could smash these guys, 
That would secure one of our borders and help uh, alleviate some of the pressure that we're currently facing. Hey, we actually got this tile too. Look at that. Ooh, also, we did see. I did. When I was doing this a little bit off screen, they're out of manpower. So that's actually extremely good for us. So we might actually be able to push eventually. We'll have to get more recovery rate, of course. As long as we hold the line here, Spain is going to die. These guys are actually doing better than I thought they would as well. Hey, oh, you can actually give us stuff? Look at that. Do we do, I guess we don't do the fate of Denmark. Oh, I guess we do, yeah. I have a short campaign across the numerous islands of Denmark. And the capture of its capital, we have managed to take down the country. Copenhagen is now in our hands. The status of the Atlantic Islands of Denmark is a particularly interesting case to deal with, but we'll have to end, end up with deciding the future of Denmark. The British of Monarchy, as much as I'd like to, they've chosen poorly and we're at war, so drastic measures have to be taken. Yemen requests an old ship. Yemen, a nation in southern Arabia, has been attempting to build a navy for months now. Uh, 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 with success occurring on the rare occasions. In order to help kickstart the project further, Yemen has also purchased the SMS Casa Wilhelm de Grossa, which was built at the turn of the century. Considering the decent price Yemen is offering for a ship this old, there's little reason to refuse this request. Uh, sure. You guys go here. That'd be fantastic. So, what are you doing? No, no, I like you there. There you go. That's what we like to see. I'll take out the small guys first if we possibly can. Anything up here? Nope. Oh, look at this. There's also things going up here, too. Fantastic. And frickin' fantastic. And so we didn't even take a part in it. Uh, you can probably go there too, that'd be probably pretty good. Ooh, not a deal. And there you go. Alright, let's beat him up. Can we just go in, maybe? Advanced fire control systems. It's fine, go ahead. And then we got encircled, not ideal. And then we got unencircled. And we'll beat the crap out of them. Pretty good. Okay. What do we got here? Very good. They're not attacking us anymore, which is fine with us. They're still working down here. All right, let's beat them up here. Marlene Dietrich, or Marlene, as the country mobilizes for yet another full Valkyrie, many in the film industry have volunteered to use their artistic talents for the sake of the German war effort. Among these patriotic volunteers is none other than Marlene Dietrich, the glamorous and beautiful so former silent film actress who visited the front lines and left the spirits of those in the trenches. Born Marie Magdalene Dietrich on the 27th of December 1901, she came from an affluent Berliner family and created her name by merging her first two names at 11. With an early background in music, a wrist injury deterred her from a career in the orchestra, darn it, and she instead found herself playing minor roles on the silver screen. In 1929, she scored her first breakthrough role with the character Lola Lola, a cabaret singer, a new face production of The Blue Angel, directed by Austrian filmmaker Josef von Sternberg. The film's roaring success led von Sternberg and Dietrich to work together for six more films, especially with Dietrich's signature image of a glamorous and mysterious femme fatale on their films. Morocco and Shanghai Express, 1932, of course, have filmed it tailing the political turmoil of the Qing Empire, have stood out as true masterpieces. While many of her films were done in the United States, a growing instability of the country, which led her to return back to Germany by 36. With the war now full swing, Dietrich has taken to the airwaves with a rendition of popular love song Lily Marine, Marlene. The government has commended her for the efforts in mobilizing the German warfare, and her songs are becoming favorites from soldiers on both sides of the Valkyrie. Her service is welcome, of course. Fantastic. And we'll do this one too. Because, like we just read, He's more, more war sport. Yeah, we're actually doing okay. Look at that. Get involved. Carnival festivities canceled due to the war, the annual Rhineland celebrations have sadly been caught off this year. Instead of happily uh, parading through the festively decorated uh, streets of Cologne, Mainz, Aachen, Bonn, and Dusseldorf, the carnivalists will spend the so called fifth season uh, at the front to defend Germany against their enemies. 
The colorful festivities have a long tradition on the western side of the Rhine and have always been a symbol of the Rhenish patriotism as it was a way to express subversive anti-Prussian and anti-French thoughts in times of occupation, mainly through parody and mockery. Now, however, with the artillery fire roaring only a few hundred kilometers away from the large western German metropolises, even the jolly Rhinelander has fallen under the spell of the militarist Prussian war machine. Etes, v etes, vat velsta mach. Wow, look at this. They are really ready to kill themselves off. I love it. We're doing all right. As we're going to take Oslo next. So, nice. Very good. Very, very good. 1940. Convoys. So the French are more aware of what's going on. I need you guys to, like, kill them off. I need you to, like, attack until they literally die. Or you die. Either one of those two. But they were smart, they do force defense there, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm really just ignoring this entire front here. Well, yeah, for the most part. Do you actually do that? Nah. That's just to Actually... The results of the Irish-German joint venture. With... Uh, the first reports of a cooperation in the, with the Irish and improved steel production coming in. Reports are broadly in line with expectations. Juno McEyne, head of the project, has proven himself a capable manager and deserves credit for getting things going. While Irish will take their share of the resources, we can enjoy the dividends from our investments going forward. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Oslo is ours. Whilst not a gigantic victory for us, it is still a victory nonetheless. Oh, the supplies of that are just got awful up here. That's why we got to really focus on the south here. Yeah, they're, they're really trying, and they're winning in some places, but, like, bro. Christmas, Christmas, East Asia, yeah, okay. Man, man, Georgia's not giving up without a fight. I mean, we're doing actually pretty well. What's the couch she's like? So we've lost a quarter million. They've lost quite a few. They've lost quite a few. We've killed off not, none of them. Wow. We've killed off almost 700,000 Russians by doing nothing. Hey, you're doing a great job. I'm completely ignoring what you're doing, but you're doing a great job. Be charismatic. Hey, level 5? No. Darn. Morale, recovery rate. Army offense. Ooh, special, so. We already have one of those, though. Commando. Hello? Oh. Oh, this is weird. I need you all to, like, have a solid front line. Or we're all gonna die. Put them into spirits, pretty good. Love this more stability. Yeah, we're doing quite well down here. Take the ports. Any sedition laws? Prevent turnip winters. The wartime blockade depleted our food stocks during the first Valkyrie and led to widespread hunger, which nearly crippled the faith of our people by the end of the war. We must prevent this from happening again by expanding the food stockpiles, or finding profiteering and investing in substitute foods. I'm gonna do this, please go ahead over this one before, probably, I think. I can't remember. I'll be honest, I really can't remember. But I probably did. Hey. Nice. Yeah, this is... This is concerning. How much... In, they're attacking and being successful in the end. But my god, is it a lot. Like, we're just here to hold out. I guess technically that's technically our border over here, so we did push in a little bit. Which is nice, don't get me wrong. Oops, there you go. Our guys are definitely holding out the best they possibly can. And I'm trying to get more anti-tank as well, or maybe anti-air, so we can, like, destroy enemy planes. Anti-air is okay, it's not great. Can you guys actually win here, maybe? Yeah, you can. That'd be fantastic. Oh, they got some more vampire. Oh, God. Morocco asks for support. Oh, the Moroccans are asking for a military mission to help develop their army. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? I thought that, that one meant yes. Well, god dang it. Yeah, we lost a little towel there. Yeah, I don't know what's happening right there, which is fine. 
Oh, hello. Oh, God. Oh, that's not good. That's better, though. We lost a lot of convoys. God dang it. We only lost the battle, technically, because we lost all those convoys. Buenos Aires. Uh, yeah. We definitely need more tungsten. No, it's just trade for it anyways. Fine. We got enough civvies. Why not? Ah, what do we got here? Oh, God. Got all that stuff done. Destroyers, that's what we can see. Air superiority, yes please. That would be nice. Fall of Kunming. Prevent turn up winters. Dissolve socialist organizations. The world gives us this a chance to cover both socialism and our perennial social democratic op opponents. Pacifist, socialist, and social democratic organizations will be disbanded due to the threat they pose in wartime unity. And the most vocal ringleaders will be detained indefinitely. That's a lot of political power. Where are we after this? Hey, it's slightly better. It's not great, but slightly better. Level 5. How about you go ahead and repair? Must be good. Fan sub holes, nice. Get some snorkels, baby. Maybe, maybe. Torpedo attack. I like them to be devastating. Oh, get there. God dang it. I keep missing escape so much. Ready to escape. What is this? Oh, you know what? Since you're here, I'm gonna come up here too. So you can find any things here and just uh, zap them. And we have more than enough time. Mines are okay. Torpedoes would be great. Yeah. My god. They're just insane. Just just attacking again. Just of agenda, European advisors, that's fine. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Hey, yes, that's what we like to see. Very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. They're slowly losing here, which is not ideal. Um, losses against the Russians, 2.1 million. How's Norway not dead yet? This is kind of ridiculous, not going to lie. Well, it's a fast way to kill a lot of convoys off, though, at least. You're more reliable, I guess. Am I out of... Yeah, I'm out of Artie. It's not good. Argentina's gone. Eh, that sucks. Yeah, that's good though. Give me a sea wolf. Yes, you are. Yeah, that's far pretty static. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Happy 1941, everybody. Research, dissolve socialist organizations, wartime mobilization. Sleeping giant must awaken. We must put our industry and society into war footing. Civilian industries must shift to military production, and the production of military material must receive top resource and workforce priority. Any sedition laws. The second Valkyrie will require full mobilization of the German nation to defend our way of life in our empire for the cynicalists and the Russians. This means we can no longer tolerate the existence of seditious elements within our nation. Radical socialists who form a fifth column must be investigated and neutered to prevent the spread of anti war propaganda. For advocating the overthrow of the cause and conspiracy against the German Empire, for contact with spies of foreign powers, for refusing to cooperate with the law enforcement of the Kingdom of Prussia, and refusing to give any information on the location of known criminals and threats to public security. Ban the KAPD. For inciting rebellion in numerous instances. During the past 10 years, for harboring spies of foreign powers, for refusing to cooperate with the law enforcement of the Kingdom of Prussia and identifying threats to the public security. For conspiracy against the German Empire and the Kaiser. Execute Unstelman. 
For several accounts of organizing robbery, battery, and attempted murders of a member of the underground socialist terror circles for conspiracy against the Kaiser and the German Empire, for being a threat to public security, for known contacts with the security services of the Federation of the Communes of France and refusing to give any information on the location and known criminals, conceded on all charges, death sentence recommended. Hunt for Ach Milka for three counts of murder. Several counts of organized robbery, battery, and attempted murder for as a member of underground socialist terrorist circles for conspiracy to assassinate high officials of the German Empire for being a threat to public security, for known contacts with the security services of the Federation of the Communes of France, death sentence in absentia recommended. Infiltrate the Social Democratic Party to prevent the development of an anti-patriotic agitation and local locate the distribution links of seditious material among the opposition parties of suspected ideological leaning. Approved by order by the chief of the Preußische Geheimpolizei and the detained pacifist socials. Democrats, for advocating for government policy on the verge of sedition, and suspected contacts with spies of foreign powers recommended by order of the chief of the Prostitia Gehypolitai. Ah, screw this is Whatever. And there goes our political power. Happy 1841. We're here to win, no matter what. Iran, thank you. My god, they're really pushing in hard. They're slowly winning, but at what cost? Looking slightly better. Advanced carrier holes are good. For subs, production output, sub detection. Speed, mass production, advanced sonar. I don't want to be visible, though. For the Junkers, fuel usage goes down. Air defense. Ground attack. Ground attack. Air attack. Yeah, yeah that'd, be, that'd be good. <clears throat> Very good here, too. Hello. Very good, very good, very good. Sweden's looking nice and thick, the way we like them. So I like my Swedes. Mountains fighting would suck. Uh, what else we got here? They're super heavy shells. Yeah, that's what we like. Convoys, good. Supplies gonna just suck so badly up here. So I might lose this, which would be unfortunate. Hopefully we get Norway done. How much more of Norway do we need? My god. 84% and that's it? I mean if India's gone. Wow. It's pretty major that happens. Oopsie. There's Liberia. It's fine. Did we get pushed back? Yeah, I think we did. Mobilization's good. Relocate industry, conversion of civilian industry, probably. Yeah. In times of war, we must require bullets, not butter, shells, not sausages. We must order civilian companies to move all or all or move part or all of the production capacity to the military goods production. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. Except fireman's would be good. Plan of the Democratic Opposition. The directive focus is squashing the seditious elements within our populace. It seems to have yielded benefits at last. The nation is more united than ever, while the left, or while the revolutionary, claiming to be moderate, uh, is being driven out of the public sphere. Members of the cabinet have dreamt of a chance to destroy the social democracy and socialism for years, and the opportunity given to them by the Second Valkyrie has been used well. We now have little to fear from the Democratic Opposition. All we need to do now is win the war, and the unity of our nations wage, waging it to be to its victorious conclusion it will be certainly helpful. Perfect. Fantastic. Any more drugs? How are we doing over here? Nice, nice, nice. Just in case. Yeah, I'm gonna go for this guy next.
Shock and all. Yeah, even more soft attack. It's definitely worth it. Could you guys actually win here, maybe? It's only one division, which is pretty nice. I'm surprised Spain has not died yet. But again, neither has these guys. I need to move you guys somewhere else. We're going to start focusing on this area down here, maybe. And you guys are the tanks and whatnot. And if anything, um... You will, like, go here. There goes Yemen. Watch out. Yemen is gone. Yummy, 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 Yemen. Basic subs. Merkel's nice. Uh, well, from the Arbeiter program, as more and more of our workers are being sent to the front, factories lose necessary personnel and the production's capacity suffers. Uh, like in the previous war, women will have to be employed, but another source of labor can be used thousands of Eastern European citizens who can be imported here as guest workers. I can expand wartime espionage. Armies require precise uh, intelligence on enemy troops, strategies, and invasion plans if we wish them to prevail. We need to expand the size of our espionage services and road out double agents within our ranks and escalate conscription. Uh, the war is turning out to be a total one, requiring a complete dedication of all of the nation's resources to prevail. Armies are running thin on reserves. Uh, we must expand the conscription bracket and hunt down those who slip through our fingers. Relocate industry. We must remove factories from the threat and run their cities and transport the equipment further inland, whether it be safe from enemy bombers and, in worst case, military occupation. Commission Maneuver Warfare uh, textbooks. We must update the textbooks and manuals used by the Imperial German Army to count the experience of the Valkyrie and how it affected the doctrine of maneuver warfare. There are plenty of theorists in the ranks of our forces who have put their thoughts in the words already, and all we need to do is have a consistent theory to follow. Proclaim a national revolution, slowly but sure the Reichskanzler, and his clique coordinate all of Germany to the centralizing of course. We can loosen our mass more and more and make it clear Schleichers led Germany towards a national revolution. A transformation which would renew German vitality, unity, and strength, and give the yearning masses a sense of purpose which parliamentarianism never will. The skull of Chief Mkawa. Mkawa. Ooh, that's really nice. Ooh. During a royal tour of Germany, the young Chief Adam Sapi of the Wahehe people lodged an awkward request. During the subjugation of East Africa, the tribal leader Chief Umkwavinika Munigumba Mwayunginga conducted a campaign of military resistance against a rule for eight long years. After his death, the sale was cut off and sent by Commander Tom von Prince to the Bremen Anthropological Museum. As part of the tour, Chief Sapi requested to visit the museum and see the skull. He asked to be returned with him to Eringa. The Wahehe have superstitions about the disposal of remains and wish to give the skull an honorable burial. What's a skull to be good relations? It's a principle of the thing. It's the prize of war. Uh, we don't need any superstitious things happening to us. The death of Wilhelm II. Our cousin Wilhelm II has died of a pulmonary embolism in the Chateau Hospital in Berlin today. It is the end of an age. Wilhelm II was the last European monarch who reigned during the 19th century. In his whole life, he tried to uphold symptoms succeeding, often failing, the values that he identified with that era. With his death, the 20th century will at last be fully upon us. All over the empire, flags are flying at half mast, and public ceremonies are being organized under the uh, Weltkriegskaiser and the Kaiser who won the war for Germany. One of the onlookers in Berlin is Crown Prince Friedrich Wilhelm, <coughs> who not to uphold the honor of the Kaiser Reich of the Royal. <coughs> Excuse me. The Kaiser is dead, along with the Kaiser Wilhelm III. Oh, this guy. Oh, he's kind of smiley. Oh, look at that. But yeah, we're still kind of hanging out here. Uh, I guess they're attacking just a tiny bit here and there. Uh, Ireland's kind of hanging out. Oh, we do have the Italian Empire. Eventually, the Italian Republic was destroyed, defeated, and we gave all the territory to, to Sicilies. And now they're led by Ferdinand the Third. Oh, that's pretty cool. 54,000 manpower. Since conscription. A couple divisions, 38. So, hey, we got a unified ally. And we've actually heard, we've done okay. We've done alright so far. Can we actually take this out? That'd be nice if we could. Don't know if we can. Oh, they're stacking stuff up. But yeah, uh, it's kind of a death spiral-ish. But we did take out Norway as well. So we got two, we got an ally. Uh, help restore Italy. But the Russians are really beating the crap out of the Finns. And the Russians are invading through Crimea. God dang, it's like real life. Uh, in the meantime, let these guys die. Oh, just a summit. Arms experts, yeah, honestly, we could use that too. And air stuff. So we're just keep working on what we got. We're gonna, gonna escalate conscription next. Panzer divisions would be nice. We could probably also use that. The age of infantry tanks is over. Armor must be massed to independent formations that can achieve sufficient breakthrough and rot enemy armies with armor mo mobility. Once developed, our fleet tank fleet will overrun the Syndicalists and the Russians towards corporatist representation. 
To keep the Reich sector tailed and foster a dream of a corporatist new state, we must consider the formation of a new parliamentary body, a council of interest from associations, unions, and corporations to represent the national interests. It'll be an advisory body for now, but we can consider more, some more revolutionary changes after the war. Uh, from Brabag? Surrounded by hostile powers on all sides, we must ensure energy efficiency, and we can achieve this through the advancement of modern technology. Brown coal into synthetic fuel, a brown coal into benzene. A state company dedicated to the development and production of synthetic fuels will aid us in this venture. Military railways. Civilian railways cannot fulfill the task of transporting enormous armed modern forces. Infrastructure requires or needs require the development and expansion of state railways dedicated solely to military transport, which can supply forces on the front and move troops from one side of Europe to another in a matter of weeks. Infrastructure development, which can already develop all the infrastructure we need. As industries and services develop, the necessity for modern infrastructure connecting every single city becomes apparent. Civilian travel, modern supply systems, and of course the movement of large armed forces all rely upon the road and rail quality, which we shall foster with grand infrastructure projects. Organized cartelization of the economy. Black money has revealed how brutal companies are in Germany, unable to stay afloat independently and needlessly wasting resources on foolish competition. We must orchestrate the unification of key industrial sectors into massive industrial cartels, which not only be able to endure financial hardship, but also fulfill the military contracts more easily. We've read this one before. Uh, from the Staatliche Banken Aufsicht, the reckless nature of the German banks led to the black money collapse and shows the government oversight is necessary to prevent it from happening again. The Reich's bank must be curtailed as well and cooperate more closely with the elected government. Expand state provided credit. The industrial sector can be moved out of its malaise by providing credit from the state. While green light the emission of more money provided to struggling businesses with very low interest, giving them the injection they need to get back on their feet and return to full production capacity. Uh, I think I might have read this before, but Salzgitter-Stahlwerke. Large quantities of low-grade iron ore near Salzgitter in the Hanover have been known since the 14th century, but they were deemed uneconomical un to smelt by the steel industry. Recent advancements in ore mining technology have cut this cost, and military needs make it crucial to achieve steel self-sufficiency. We shall establish a state-owned mining company in Salzgitter to make use of the resources. As support German car manufacturers, Germany is the home of the modern car. And ever since Carl Benz and other pioneers, we have held a key share in the international car industry. The economic crisis threatens the sector, however. The demand for cars is shrinking, and numerous small manufacturers are going under. We must keep it alive with state support, after all. Car factories can quickly be repurposed for wartime production. Uh, what else do we want to do? Military railways. Uh, this wouldn't be too bad to do either. Rakin, Rakiten Vefa. The rocket launcher secures alternative to artillery, which is more expensive and less accurate, but allows for greater range of mobility as vehicle mounted rocket launchers have little to no recoil and allow the vehicle to leave the field at once. Let's focus on research on the Rakiten of our friend deploy first rocket artillery brigades. The coronation of Velen III. I forgot about this. The crown prince of Ger the German Empire, who had patiently waited to succeed his now legendary father since 1888, has been coronated and assumed his throne as Velen III, German Emperor. Even invigorating the problematic geopolitical situation, the coronation was faced with some issues, as the empire does not actually have a tradition of ceremonial investiture. No German imperial crown was ever made in a on paper, the only ceremonial crown of Velen II does, and neither he nor his predecessor Friedrich III has a coronation. A coronation ceremony was held following Prussian traditions in the capital. Velen II. Uh, needs not only to fulfill the expectations left behind his father, but also the battle's own less than splendid reputation. He is despised by the left and viewed as a buffoon by the right, however, no matter what one side may see or think of, of him, they have to accept that he's now the Kaiser. Heil der M. Siegerkranz! The Kaiser and his friend. Though years of service as the Reichskanzler has caused him to become somewhat distant, the new Kaiser, Velen III, remains a friend of Krip von Schleicher, and now that he's finally assumed his late father's thro throne, he served that this will allow him to finally restore the power of the crown. Surely, Schleicher's prepared the empire for him. That was one of the promises which he made when proposing his candidacy during those fateful days back in 1936. Yet, reality, as it turns out, is often disappointing. In truth, Schleicher never had any intention to strengthen the power and standing of the Kaisers, though they are important symbols of patriotic pride whose presence allows them to unify all of Germany behind his vision. That is all they need to be a symbol, not a powerful actor, and especially not Velen III, whom Schleicher always saw as quite dim. The Reichskanzler ordered the reestablishment of the Privy Council, this time to serve as a direct connection between the government of the National Unity Front and the Kaiser and brief him on the most important matters, however. His suggestions during council meetings will remain suggestions. Velen III might imagine himself to be involved, but the truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Or, perhaps, ironically, that the disintegration of the constitutional practice meant his power is the smallest of all the Kaisers in history. The Kaiser rules, Buzz does not govern. The death of Duke Ernst von Saxe-Meiningen. Today, Duke Ernst of Saxe-Meiningen passed away at the age of 82. Famous as the uh, Malahazog, the painting, uh, painting duke. Well, the duke he never wanted to be duke. 
Ernst, who only ascended to the throne of age 60, was widely known for his key enthusiasm for the fine arts and his disinterestment in politics, something that stood in dark contrast, stark contrast to the ruling style of his older brother and predecessor Bernard III. A bellicose admirer of the Prussian way of life, while his legacy of only 14 years of rule might seem small compared to his father and grandfather, both ruled Saxe, Meinen, and King for about half a century, Ernst definitely would not be forgotten, as many of the Duke's beautiful self painted pictures already display as part of the permanent exhibition at the Lindenau uh, Art Museum in Meiningen. He'll be missed. Hey, stability. Uh, we lost some territory to the 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 red, so they've come back, which is not good. But other than that, we're doing all right. We're still pushing. Well, we lost some places, pushing, but in all honesty, we're just trying to consolidate our hold here. Uh, once again, we're sh shipping off stuff to East Asia. Uh, we're not pushing at all, just because we need to build up some supply through here as well. Because my God, is it terrible? Oh, is it so bad? But we just finished Stahl's get that Stahl Vakau, which is fantastic. And of course, we read public works, start a couple of interests, bureaucrat oaths of loyalty. That wouldn't be bad either to do. We got to locate industry, get more war support. We must now move factories from the threatened render cities and transport the equipment further inland. We'll be safe from enemy bombers in the worst case, military occupation. But vitalize uh, heavy industry. Steel and guns are what first comes to mind to an average European when they hear of German industry, and they deserve reputation. The heavy industries of the German Empire built up the prosperity of the Rhineland. And I'll fit in the most powerful army in Europe, it is only fair that we return this industry in kind. Um, so we got all this stuff over here. Foreign policy, don't really care about too much. But then the industrial projects, the black money crisis, and the rearmament of the syndicalist movement, or power it requires, uh, us to enact deeper intervention into the imperial economy. We must make sure that the machines of the war are turning, developing a vast industrial base to give labor to the people and guns to the hand, and order the second Valkyrie prepared for anything that may come. So we're not doing well here either, huh? Here's the recruitment of Poland. That's not ideal. Take over the Gelsen's Kirchner, Bergswerk, AG. Establish nest in the Gelsen Kirchner, Bergswerk, AG is one of the largest coal mining companies in the German Empire, and has spent the interwar period acquiring a larger and larger share of the market through acquisitions of the competitors, often financed through various loans. Now its owner, Fridge Schlick, is faced with the cost of its overambitious investments, a failing enterprise and massive due loans weighing down the entire conglomerate. As it's looking for someone to buy stocks off them, we have the opportunity to step in and purchase a controlling share of GBAG. Effectively giving the state control, uh, state control over much of the German coal industry. It'd be fantastic. Great Vrandigda, Schellwecke. The world is home to numerous iron, steel, and coal companies, which healthily competed during the economic boom of the 20s and 30s. But the new economic crisis means that they are all rapidly falling to the right. With the opportunity to execute an enormous merge of all of these enterprises into one, the United Steelworks, and so to place much of the industrial capacity in the world under one massive friendly corporation. And eventually we'll do merge Heidelberg, Cement, and Portland, Cement, Spon, AG. Heidelberg and the Spahn, Spahn family company are the two leading cement producing companies in Baden. And during the post Valkyrie period, they've increasingly gravitated towards one another. It's time for the government to aid these two companies to take the next step and start integrating into a massive cement industry cartel, which will be able to fulfill any military industrial contracts with ease. Expand Westfalenhütte. Established by the Hosch AG in 1871, the Westfalenhütte, east, northeast of Dortmund. It's one of the largest industrial sites in Western Germany, employing thousands of workers in heavy industries. The tall chimneys of its numerous steel furnaces, seen from afar, are a symbol of the industrialization of the Rhineland, the powerhouse of the German economy it has become, and the importance of heavy industry to all of Germany, if not Europe. It still has room for improvement, however. Additional investments in the site will allow us to make room for additional factories, and the establishment of a train station for the site will allow production to come in and out much more efficiently. Establish a Dortmund World Steel Association. The world is home to numerous steel producers and a myriad of steel processing plants. While competition between them is healthy for the market, they also need to be able to cooperate, be it for common production standards or for shared military production quotas. The Baustahlhaus and Dusseldorf will become the home of the Rail Steel Producers Association in Germany and become the Greater Stahlwerksverband, a cartel of industrialists which control the steel market in Germany. This will ensure that civilians and the military will have access to a plentiful, high quality rural steel. Establish the Bosch Trotka Werke GmbH, uh, based in Stuttgart. Bosch AG is a leading producer of electric appliances and engines in Germany, and expanded greatly during the 20s and 30s through strategic acquisitions and diversification of its production. It may also is no stranger to be to military contracts. Already, Bosch provides the hail with uh, crucial equipment such as injection pumps, starters, magneto igniters, plants which will become geared towards production of armaments for the army. Thus, will be a natural development for them. We've been introduced to a plan to establish a stick finance a Bosch industrial plant away from the French border and. H uh, Hildesheim, which will slowly produce armaments and appliances for military needs, and of course employ hundreds of workers relieved during the crisis as well. Let's give Robert Bosch the green light for the project. Finance Alpelwerk 
Brandenburg. Opel, one of Germany's most important car manufacturers, expanded greatly and steadily throughout the 20s and 30s, having pioneered innovative mass production technologies, which allowed it to hold more than 25% of the domestic car passenger uh, market since 1928. The company's continued expanding, even after the Black Monday crisis, and seeks to establish a new production site in Brandenburg near Berlin. She will provide this initiative support, working in an ally in the automotive sector which promises to produce thousands of trucks for the future war effort. And then we'll talk about this in a little bit. As right now, we are doing alright. Uh, Finland capitulated, but we've been able to bring them back, luckily. Uh, Russia has lost six, over six million cal six, has six, over six million casualties. I can't speak anymore, apparently. They have less than a thousand manpower, and they have. Do they have any guns? They have a few guns. Uh, they have a little. Bit, they got a couple guns. So we just can't do a general attack. However, at this point, we're pretty strong, I'd say overall. We can do small little attacks here and there to start pushing the line further back and back and back. Now, destroying them would be obviously a better bet, but we're gonna do all right. And we'll do the best we possibly can. Uh, let him win there, and you, you hold. And that's computer machine would be very nice. We're gonna come over here because I forgot about tanks completely, but you know whatever. Um, six divisions in the north. It's still pretty tough to do anything there. Here we're gonna go to Lati. Yes, please. And we need another one too. For orchestrate formation of the Auto Union AG. Uh, during the 20s, Danish engineer Jorgen Skafta Rasmussen significantly expanded his influence in the German automotive sector, starting sitting with his acquisition of the majority shared Audi Werk AG, commonly known as just Audi, followed by several smaller automotive enterprises across Saxony. However, the economic crisis following Black Monday dealt a serious blow to his empire, and he has been faced to surrender, forced to surrender much of his assets to other investors and banks. Hence, however, we have the opportunity to intervene. If you recognize and merge all the Rasmussen's holdings into one conglomerate, we will inject rationalization uh, and efficiency into the Saxon automotive industry. Let us call this conglomerate auto union and bestow it a symbol for interlocking O's to signify its origins. A vehicle contract for BMW Fahrzeug Fabrik Eisenach by a Molten. Velka AG is a Bavarian engine manufacturer who made a living from producing aircraft and motorcycle engines during the 20s and 30s through some clever purchases, however. They acquired a Fahrzeug Fabrik Eisenach AG, an automobile production plant in Thuringia, and been delving into passenger car production. The first attempts have not been very successful. They've been provided BMW with but eventual contacts or contracts, however, we can foster the development as an independent vehicle manufacturer and so put the resources to use in wartime. Yeah, they're still getting attacked a little bit. We've not done much with the Dutch. Niger is gone. And yeah, other than that, we're still producing, uh, trying to build some supply depots all around here. So you guys can hold there as we are out of trucks, which really sucks. But like I said, we're here to just beat the slowly beat the crap out of all these enemies. Slowly, slowly, slowly. So there's some very, very weak points here. Of course, the Ukrainian army has some very weak points too, but you know, whatever it is, what it is. Uh, what do you guys do this too? You should be able to do that fine. So slow little attacks here and there, little dots. Where we can just just deal a crap ton of damage to these divisions, and whatnot. So should be all right. Should be all right. Ukrainian army doesn't have a lot of divisions, but that should be all right. Let this division move first, and then we'll attack you next. Yes, please. Thank you very much, man. You, my God, you're taking forever, are you? There you go. Do the best you can. Help support the attack too. And so my goal at this point is to knock out the Russians first, as they are almost halfway, 45% towards capitulation. We have probably have a better chance of destroying them than anything else. Ooh. Oh no. Carrier stuff. Oh god dang it. We have carrier stuff to do. Oh god dang it. Uh, we have more than enough air XP, of course, as you can see. Self fueling uh, armor plates? No, the three is more than enough. Move. Self fuel fighter heavies. Cannons. There you go. There you go. So we got fighters. Be floats for them. Nope. Uh, naval bombers and fighters. Oh, we need fighters. We. Uh, what do we need? Carrier cast. We don't really need to have it, but we still have it on anyways. I'm not sure which one's the best one. Let me know in the comments below which one you think is the best one. It's not bad, but the jelly just craps a bed. Small bomb bay. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna need some more military factors, anyways. So there you go. Well, let's say they're still attacking us a little bit here and there, whatever. Better way. Goodbye. Yes. What do we got right here? You go right there. Yes. That'd be great. Very nice. We're doing that too. We're doing this here. 
Uh, unless we've got the energy, that's fine. Are we building ourselves up here? We're building ourselves up. Yes, yes, yes. We got some radar. Fantastic. And you can also probably use some stuff here too. Oh, we're attacking there too, huh? Yeah, we can help them out. Why not? Any more research? I'll put. I like research bugs for now. I'll put it in the middle. It's probably better overall. Body division is a bit too much for us. Uh, we're still out of that. That's whatever. You guys up out right here. Should be able to beat the crap out of them. All quiet on the home front. The summer of 1942 is a particularly hot one. While millions of brave German soldiers are sacrificing their lives to the greater good of Europe, <clears throat> German people, uh, the home front are searching for distraction and light entertainment. To cope with the heat and the uncertainty about what would happen to their fathers, sons, and brothers in the front. Great places to do so are the many public war swimming pools, uh, bathing ponds, and sport venues across the country that still draw thousands of visitors every day despite the war. Last Saturday, among these visitors were none other than His Majesty, Kaiser Wilhelm III, and his wife, Duchess Cecile, who were uh, spotted at a tennis match in Berlin, suburb of Wannsee. Down to earth and close to the people, the caliber presented themselves in leisurely summer outfits and with modern sunglasses, definitely a stark contrast to the imperial, almost divine grandeur that the royal family demonstrated to the outside world during the last 50 years under Wilhelm II. While this encounter of the entertaining kind might be worth a, a short side article on the vast array of German tabloid magazines, it doesn't change the fact that the war is still raging sometimes. It's small things in life that can make people forget what really matters, I see. We're deep in the annual silly season again. What happened here? Ooh! I sent some subs. Very nice. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Yeah, we'll do that one next, too. We're doing mass public works. Uh, South American Cordon uh, Sanitaire. The growth of socialism in the southern cone threatens to consume all of South America. We must not let this pass and begin forming an anti-socialist cordon of trustworthy states from this region. We'll be able to work together to stop this threat when the time comes. Develop mechanized infantry. Motorized infantry struggles to maintain the momentum of an attack in battlefields obstructed by craters and trenches. And the soft-skinned vehicles offer little protection for troops. We must transition towards elite infantry equipped with half-tracks that can keep up with the tanks while providing adequate support. Infantry motorization. The advancement of technology still allows us to expand the maneuver capabilities of our entire infantry force, not just selected spearheads, creating a new edge for our forces. Uh, though even partial mobilization of the infantry forces will be expensive, it's not impossible to afford, and the boons will outweigh the costs to hold. Hmm. Nationalist indoctrination, above all else, a German soldier must believe in the empire, the Kaiser, and the regime, and understand that he's fighting for the sake of the German race from extinction. Such patriotic feelings will motivate our troops into breaking through even the toughest of defenses. So, we're going to try a general push. Obviously, there's a lot of red, but there's quite a bit of green as well, which is also very good. We just made an encirclement in the south, which is very good. And from Brabag. Um, what else do we got here? Hmm. Group and Tactical Formation. Kampf Group and Ad Hoc Combined Arms Formation. Established for a specific task at any given moment during a larger operation. They're much more elastic than standard divisions can be formed to respond to immediate needs in the front. We must expand the use across the Imperial German Army. So we're doing quite well. We've lost almost a million soldiers. The Russians lost over 7 million. And I just want to just knock them out of the war. And that is the goal. We're actually doing better across the entire front. Um, we've improved our Air Force. It's 1942, of course, November. But, you know, we're just, we're just doing better. We're literally just doing better. So, uh, we've actually been able to get all the way down to Petrograd almost, too. Which is fantastic. Portable radios are nice. We've got a lot of our guys captured. A lot of our spies, unfortunately. Um, they're attacking us. We attack them. You know, all the good stuff. You guys come down here. That would be great if you could. We'll see. We're still out of trucks, but... With what we're doing right now, we might do okay. We did break their ciphers, so... We are really pushing hard in the south, which is fantastic. Just drastically racking up casualties, though. But they don't have a lot enough divisions. The center's holding for them, for the most part. But, we'll see. We will definitely see soon. Um, if we could break through here, that would be so good, but... It's just, they're just so thick up here. Oh, and I guess... Anything going on here? No? Okay. We're doing really well against convoys, at least. But we're heavily pushing the south, my goodness. That's good, but we'll only need more than just one push to do this. Because we've lost now almost 900,000. Birth and disappearance, fantastic. 7.3 per million. Oh, yeah, we got Rezev. Rezev. Something like that. Here, we're, we're working on our Mountaineers. Breakthrough and soft attack. Combat with, and more defense. Ooh. All Mountaineers breakthrough. Italian modifier, line artillery, soft attack. So does that improve all of our infantry that uses that? It could, maybe. 
I mean, overall, though, like we're, we're pushing really hard and fast into them. 2018 divisions, they are out of infantry equipment, which is fantastic. What? We keep having more and more of our agents captured. God dang it. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's good that we can spy on them and whatnot, but... Yeah, it's, it's just a lot of red right now. So it'll probably take at least one more big old push before we can do too much else. So we're going to hold the line. And we're probably going to end the episode here and then readjust ourselves. Let's say, and then we'll have one more final push. And we might be able to capitulate the Russians in the beginning of the next episode. We'll see. There's no guarantee, of course. Uh, that being said, we're going to do this one. Uh, that one's all right. Division recovery, which is good, nice. Ground attack factor. So prepare for wide front operations. If you want to do this, please go ahead. But vanquish French fortifications. And France will face several layers of fortifications. Designed to counter usual aggressive pushes. To compensate, we must escalate our destructive capabilities and gear. Our forces for a vast combined arms breakthrough on the border. Expand with the Friedrich Krupp AG. The Krupp Conglomerate is one of the most famous steel and arms producers in all of Europe. And our ties with the establishment go a long way back. We must retain and expand these ties, fostering cooperation between our army and defense industry. But of Western airships. To break the syndicalists, we must win the war in the air, and if we want to win the war in the air, we must deploy more and more planes in every place to store them. New airships along the Western Front will ensure that we always maintain a miracle edge. Assemble on production methods. In the next world will be a war of mass production, and uh, not of individual equality. We must start implementing modern assembly line production in the industry of Vaca and other state industries to drastically increase our production efficiency and reinvigorate naval yards. The part of the German coastal cities is naval yards which built the invincible Kaiser of the Shimanin, must return to war footing and we shall grant them new contracts and hold, hold meetings with naval arm manufacturers to receive preferential status and restore our lost potential. Victory or death. In the eyes of some, the have much like its predecessor. Uh, the Prussian army must be apolitical and serve as the right arm of the Kaiser. We disagree. Our soldiers' minds must be injected with nationalist, patriotic ideology. They need to know that they are fighting for the nation's survival and be willing to sacrifice themselves if necessary. Absolutely. But, like I said, we're going to end it there, and hopefully in the next episode we'll be ready to just completely smash through uh, the rest of Russia, because they're not looking so good, and they need to die. So, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like if you like the video, subscribe if you're new, check out my link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, as hopefully we'll only have one front to deal with next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.